Turn in your King James Bible to John chapter 10. The uh, Lord showed me this the other day. I need to make a point about this. John chapter 10, beginning in verse 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Jesus Christ revealing the very first mention of what we would call the pre-trib rapture. Very interesting. We hear his voice. He's the door that John sees opened up in heaven. And he hears a voice, as it were, a trumpet talking with him. The trump of God, in other words. Amazing truth of Scripture. But look at verse 4 and 5. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Very interesting. Because um, I've seen this thing for many, many years now. Uh, the thing of when you are saved, when you, you are truly born again, you'll listen to some guy and you'll hear the Spirit of the Lord coming through that guy and you'll say, boy, just, it's, it's like I just can't stop listening and... and you know, it doesn't mean the guy's perfect or whatever, but it just means, you know, he's he's Holy Spirit speaking through that man. But at the same time, you'll hear somebody else and you just, what they say sounds right, but you, there's just something there that you just feel uncomfortable. You just kind of, and I don't mean Martin Richling creepy uncomfortable, you know. I said years and years ago, in this very room actually, I said, uh, you know, if you can listen to Martin Richling for more than five minutes, I'd question if you're even saved, you know, and people were saying, what? And they listen to him and they say, I couldn't even make, make it through about 10 seconds of the guy. He's just, just sarcastic, angry, just bitter. My word, the guy is just a evil, just exuded evil. Um, I'm not even talking that level of evil. I'm talking, there are people that speak in a very smooth, very almost condescending way, you know, and you just can't listen to them. You just try and, and you just, I can't listen to this guy. Um, I was doing some research earlier. I was going to put together a, like a DVD, like a little documentary on the new IFB. And I made a video about it. Uh, I think it was called the Straight, A Straight Betwixt Two. I had to quit. I had to stop. Um, I can only take Steven Anderson and his followers for little amounts of time. I, just, I can't sit there and listen to somebody blaspheming the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, saying he burned in hell, um, just the hatred towards the Jewish people. I, I can't take it for very long, even as a preacher, even as somebody who the Lord has gifted me with going in and picking apart what a false teacher is saying so that I can warn people and tell you how to spot a false teacher. God's given me that talent, but even with that, I can only listen to these people for short amounts of time. And I know a lot of you out there say the same thing. There's just something about that guy. I don't know what it is. You know, a lot of you come out against Breaker and you say, yeah, I, you know, now that I know that, you know, he's openly said that, you know, he doesn't agree with Jesus saying that no man can know the day or the hour. I do not agree, you know, with that statement. He called Paul a date setter. Uh, he himself is a date setter, then claims he's not. I mean, the guy is just a fraud. And a lot of you people out there, you know, you say, yeah, I was trying to listen to him, but there just wasn't something there, it wasn't connecting. You know, and then you find out that he's a fake, he's a fraud, and you say, oh, okay, that, that makes sense now. Um, my point is, when you are saved, there is supposed to be a spirit of fellowship there. All right? Um, and you'll have to have grace for other brethren because they're not going to be perfect, but you're going to be able to feel the Holy Spirit coming through other people. And you'll, you'll meet somebody you know the, one of the neatest things in the world is when you actually meet in person another bible believing christian and you just start to talk and you start to share things of what the lord's doing in your life and how the lord gave you a chance to witness to this person and whatever else and it just the whole world just kind of ceases to exist almost <laughs> you know you don't even care what people think as they're walking by i remember i met a, a bible believer in auto parts store down in uh town south of us here and we just started talking about the bible and it was a great time of fellowship and the other employees are kind of getting nervous and you know kind of walk over this way and whatever because we're talking about the bible and having a great time it's a it's a blessed thing and i know a lot of you you long for that don't you but uh 
Why is it that people that call me false obsessively watch my videos? If they are the ones that have the Holy Spirit of God within them, where's the vexation? I can tell you in all seriousness, I've probably watched less than 20 videos, full sermons, beginning to end, hour-long sermons from Stephen Anderson in all these years, less than 20. And that's just because of exposing the guy. Um, I can't listen to him for long. I just can't do it. Um, anybody else like that, I just cannot listen to them. Uh, if they have a short video that I can get in there and, and just kind of show and debunk and whatever else, but it just makes my skin crawl. It just, oh, oh, I can't listen to this guy. And yet they can watch me just for hours and hours and hours. Where's the vexation of spirit? You know? And the Bible doesn't say, well, you just continue, you just spend your whole life exposing somebody. Um, it doesn't say that. Okay, uh, a man that is in heretic after the first and second admonition reject. Boom, one, two, and you go away. <laughs> but these people just obsessively watch me. 10, 12 hours a day or whatever else, just making video after video after video after video about me. Now, it's interesting, too, that a lot of these people, they mention my name more than they mention Jesus Christ. They have more videos titled with my name in it than they do Jesus Christ for the lost world out there. Hmm. Almost like I'm an idol to them. They spend more time with me than they do with Jesus. You see, what we're seeing here is another test to prove who's real and who's false. If you're real, you're going to look at the false prophets out there, the false teachers, and just say, you know what? I've heard enough. I don't need to listen anymore. I don't want to watch that stuff anymore. I mean, the, the thing we did on Robert Breaker, uh, this uh, thing about asking, you know, whatever else. You're not supposed to ask. You just believe whatever that thing was. Um, we did a live stream on that. And I'll tell you what, that video, by the end of it, I was just saying, I can't, I don't know if I, how much more of this I can take. And a lot of you were saying the same thing. You were just saying, oh, oh, I'm getting a headache. It's just, ugh. Why? John chapter 10, verses 1 through 5. We'll flee. Right there. Notice it says, and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. They'll flee from him. Doesn't it make you want to run away from some of these people? You just hear me, you just, oh, 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 you know, you just, you get really weirded out. Yeah. So, um, I, I find that that's one of the, the most amazing things about being born again when the Holy Spirit of God moves within you and all of a sudden you'll start to feel things that you didn't feel before. You know, change life again. There's that pesky old change life that some of the false converts hate. But the fact of the matter is we do have spiritual sense there where we can watch and we can hear somebody and you don't even, sometimes they're saying the right things, but you just kind of, there's just something there that's kind of, uh, you know. I remember the first time somebody sent me a link to Robert Breaker's video on, uh, or was it not October, um, September 23rd, 2015. And they said, oh, what do you think about this? This guy's former PBI, whatever else. I didn't know anything about the guy. And I watched his video, you know, date setting. And, um, He's, he has a date above his head, but it's, he's not date setting. Yeah. Um, but I watched it and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm trying to have grace and I'm hearing things and I'm kind of going, uh, 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 you know, and just kind of, and I thought, well, he's new. You know, he, he doesn't know that that much. I've never even heard of the guy before. And like I said, I was the head of the Bible believing group years and years ago, 2010 or so. I was the head of the Bible believing group on YouTube. I knew all the different guys that were there at the time. Never heard of Robert Breaker, but uh, so you know, I'm watching the guy, and and I, you know, and my wife walks in the room and she's looking at it, and she goes, "That guy's fake," you know. She just, oh, man, I, I can't stand. It. I'm sorry, I don't want to. And I said, "Well, just listen to the guy a little bit." Nope, sorry, I, something about him just, the uh, you know. And you know, I used to give uh, some other people a chance too, and um, my wife would walk into the room and no, no, don't can't listen to the guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, yeah, I know, you know, and I try to make excuses for people. I got people have no idea how much grace I have. They really don't. They just see me with the, the rough judgmental type of stuff, whatever, and they think, oh, he just has no grace. I have a lot of grace. Okay, I've put up with a lot of things with people. Um, 
I, I don't like to say people are lost, okay? I don't have some kind of a special little knife to grind or whatever else that I want to be the only Christian out there. I do not. I, I can't stand the thought of that. You know, I'd like to just be able to say that, you know, a whole lot of people out there are saved and they're just confused in different points and whatever else. But that would contradict what the scriptures say. So, um, but as you grow older as a Christian, you will cultivate that. Um, you'll get more, I shouldn't say cultivate, but you'll get more used to the Holy Spirit prompting. And um, trust that feeling. When you're listening to a preacher, and I mean, first of all, they need to be saying, turn in your Bible, unless it's some kind of just a quick evangelistic type of thing or whatever else. But if it's a Bible study, they need to be telling you to pick up a King James Bible and turn in it. And if they aren't, that's problem number one. But uh, you'll start to get that feeling of, uh, stop watching them. And don't turn them back on and just, oh, I wonder what they're saying next. I wonder what, the, you know. Flee from them. You know, the Bible says that we're to resist the devil. and Flee from the devil. Okay? Um, you got to keep that in mind. His ministers appear as the ministers of righteousness, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. So, just want to make a little video about that real quickly. Just something the Lord kind of put on my mind. Uh, another way to prove that my enemies are fake. Um, because they obsessively watch everything I do. They obsessively watch some of the things that the other brethren do. Um, just watching and watching and watching every little thing that they're doing. You're not going to do that as a Christian, as a saved Christian. You'll flee from the uh, fake preachers and things like that. So that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.